In this video, you will learn four applications of the modular arithmetic. How to verify an international standard book number, how to verify a universal product code, how to validate a credit card number, and how to determine a day given a specific date. An ISBN is essentially a product identifier used by publishers, booksellers, libraries, internet retailers, and other supply chain participants for ordering, listing, sales record, and stock control purposes. It identifies the registrant as well as the specific title, edition, and format. ISBNs were 10 digits in length up to December 31, 2006, but since January 1, 2007, they now consist of 13 digits. Each ISBN is composed of five elements, the prefix elements which currently can only be 978 or 979 and it's always three digits in length. The registration group element which identifies the country, the geographical region, or the language area participating in the ISBN system. This may be one to five digits in length. The registrant element which identifies the publisher or the imprint that is up to seven digits in length. The publication element which identifies the edition and format of a specific title. This may be up to 6 digits in length. And the check digit or the final digit which validates the rest of the digits. Note that each section of the ISBN is separated by spaces or hyphens. Now for the 13-digit ISBN also known as the ISBN-13, we will assign D sub 1 as the first digit, D sub 2 as the second digit, D sub 3 as third until we reach D sub 13 as the final digit or also known as the check digit. Then the check digit is chosen to satisfy this equation. Note that 3 are multiplied to digits whose subscript are even numbers. So we multiply 3 to D sub 2, D sub 4, D sub 6, D sub 8, D sub 10, and D sub 12. Which shows that each digit has a weight of only 1 or 3. Note that since this quantity is in modulo 10, we're only going to have values from 0 to 9. And subtracting those values from 10, we're only going to have 1 to 10 as the final answer. Thus, if the value of D sub 13 or the check digit is 10, we're going to use 0 as the check digit. For our first example, let's try to determine the ISBN check digit X of the book, the equation that couldn't be solved by Mario Livio. Its first 12 digits are 9780743258820. So 9 will be our D sub 1, 7 will be our D sub 2, up to 0 which is our D sub 12. All we have to do is to substitute those values to this quantity. We're in the 2nd, 4th, 6th, 8th. 10th and 12th digit will be multiplied to 3. So D sub 1 will be 9, D sub 2 will be 7, D sub 3 will be 8, D sub 4 will be 0, D sub 5 will be 7, D sub 6 will be 4, D sub 7 will be 3, D sub 8 will be 2, D sub 9 will be 5, D sub 10 will be 8, D sub 11 will be 2, and D sub 12 will be 0. Then all we have to do is to get the sum of this quantity which leads to 97. Since 97, modulo 10, or when 97 is divided by 10, the remainder is 7, and 10 minus 7 is 3, then D sub 13 is 3, or in other words, this check digit is 3. Next, we have the fourth edition of American Heritage Dictionary with ISBN 9780395825174. Now suppose, however, that a bookstore clerk sends an order from the American Heritage Dictionary and inadvertently enters the number 9780395285174, where the clerk transposed the 8 and 2 in the 5 numbers that identify the book. Note here that the correct ISBN has 8 and 2 as the 8th and 9th digit respectively, not 2 and 8. Now the receiving clerk calculates the check digit as follows. Using 9 as D sub 1, 7 as D sub 2, 8 as D sub 3, 2 as D sub 8, and 8 as 8 sub 9 until 7 as D sub 12, we're going to have this quantity which is equal to 124. And since 124 modulo 10 or when 124 is divided by 10, the remainder is 4 and 10 minus 4 is 6. Then the check digit or the 13th digit must be 6. Now because the check digit is 6 and not 4 as it should be, the receiving clerk knows that an incorrect ISBN has been sent. 
Consider that in this video, we only limited to verification of ISBN 13. To verify 10-digit ISBNs, we use 10 to 1 as the weights of the first to the 10th digit, and its sum at modulo 11 must be equal to 0. On the back of the book, there is an ISBN. Let's write down my number here on the back. 0, 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 8, 1, 9, I'm going to take the first digit, multiply it by 10. The second digit there, I'm going to times by 9. The third digit, I multiply by 8. The next digit, I times by 7, and you can keep going. And the very last digit, you multiply by 1. Now what you do is you add these together. Uh, if you add these numbers together, you will get the number 121. And this number is a multiple of 11 and it always will be a multiple of 11. The universal product code or the UPC on the other hand is a 12-digit number which is composed of a 6-digit manufacturer identification followed by a 5-digit item number and a check digit. Note that UPCs are one-dimensional barcodes which scanners scan the code horizontally. These barcodes are common in grocery items. Although these days you may have encountered two-dimensional barcodes and its special type, the QR codes, we will not deal with those codes in this video. Going back with the UPC, we're going to verify it using this equation and we're going to compute D sub 12 or the check digit as D sub 12 is equal to 10 minus 3 times D sub 1 plus, 2 plus 3 times D sub 11 modulo 10. Note that we're going to multiply 3 this time on the digits whose subscripts are odd numbers. And similar with the ISBN, this quantity will be from 0 to 9 since this is in modulo 10. And subtracting this quantity from 10, we're going to have 1 to 10 as the values of the check digit. And if the check digit is 10, we're going to make use of 0. For our first example, let's try to find the check digit X of the DVD release of the film Alice in Wonderland. We're in the first 11 digits are 7, 8, 6, 9, 3, 6, 7, 9, 7, 9, 8. So 7 will be our D sub 1, 8 will be our D sub 2, 6 will be our D sub 3, up to 8 as our D sub 11. And substituting those values to this quantity, we're in the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11 will be multiplied to 3. And getting this quantity, we're going to have 155. And 155 modulo 10, or when 155 is divided by 10, the remainder is 5. And 10 minus 5 is 5. So D sub 12 or the check digit X is 5. Now for the second example, let's try to determine if the universal product code 7056324419947 is valid. In which 7 will be our D sub 1, 0 will be our D sub 2, 5 will be our D sub 3, up to 4 which is our D sub 11, and 7 which is our D sub 12 or the check digit. Again, consider that the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11th digit will be multiplied to 3. And substituting those values to this equation, we're going to have this quantity as equal to 93. And 93 modulo 10 or when 93 is divided by 10, the remainder is 3. And since 10 minus 3 is 7, thus our check digit D sub 12 has to be 7 which apparently is the one given here. Thus we can say that this universal product code is valid. A credit card number is usually composed of 13 to 16 digits where its first 1 to 4 digits are used to identify the card issuer. For MasterCards, the first 2 digits is any number from 51 to 55, while for Visa cards, the first digit is 4. In this table, we can see the possible first digits and the number of digits in different credit cards. Now to verify a credit card number, we are going to apply the LAN algorithm, also known as the Modulus 10 algorithm. This algorithm is named after an IBM scientist, Hans Peter Lan. In the LAN algorithm, the first step is starting from the next to last digit or also known as the second to the last digit, reading from right to left, double every other digit. If a digit becomes two-digit number after being doubled, treat the number as two individual digits. Next step is to get its sum and the last step is to check if it is zero in modulo 10. For our first example, let's try to determine whether 5234-8213-3410-1298 is a valid credit card number. So beginning with the next to last digit, reading from right to left, and this is 9, 
we have to double every other digit. So meaning 9, 1, 1, 3, 1, 8, 3, and 5 will be multiplied to 2. So multiplying these digits to 2, we're going to have this one. And if in case that a digit becomes a two-digit number after being multiplied to 2, just like in 5 that became 10, 8 that became 16, and 9 became 18, treat the numbers as two individual digits. Meaning 10 will be treated as 1 and 0, 16 will be treated as 1 and 6, and 18 will be treated as 1 and 8. Note here that 10 became 1 plus 0, 16 became 1 plus 6, and 18 became 1 plus 8. And as we get the sum of these digits, which is 60, we just have to check whether that sum at modulo 10 is equal to 0. And since 60 modulo 10, or when 60, when divided by 10, the remainder is 0, then that satisfies this condition, then we can say that this credit card number is valid. Next example, let's try to determine whether this credit card number 52687912345678900 is valid. So again, starting from the next to last digit, which is 9, we have to double every other number. So starting with 9, 7, 5, 3, 1, 7, 6, and 5. Those numbers will be doubled, so 5 becomes 10, 6 becomes 12, 7 becomes 14, 1 becomes 2, 3 becomes 6, 5 becomes 10, 7 becomes 14, and 9 becomes 18. Then after multiplying to 2, we have to add those individual digits. And since the sum of the individual digits is 71, and since 71 modulo 10 or when 71 is divided by 10, the remainder is 1, in which a valid credit card number must have 0 in modulo 10, then this credit card number is invalid. To determine a day of a specific date, we will apply the Zeller's congruence. This algorithm is named after Christian Zeller. To calculate the day of the week given any Gregorian calendar date, we're going to make use of this equation. As we can see, the Zeller's congruence needs the following. D, which is the day of the month. M, which is a number representing the month. 3 for March, 4 for April, and so on, but 13 will be used for January and 14 will be used for February. Y, which is the year or the last two digits of the year, and C is for century or the first two digits of the year. So if it is September 25, 2020, D will be equal to 25, M will be equal to 9, Y will be equal to 20 based on the last two digits of the year, C will also be 20 which is based on the first two digits of the year. Be cautious that the values written in brackets have to be rounded down in its nearest whole number. And since this is in modulo 7, we will have 0 to 6 as the final answer, indicating that 0 means it is a Saturday, 1 means it is a Sunday, and so on. Be cautious as well that January and February are treated as the 13th and the 14th month of the previous year. That is why M equals 13 is used for January and M equals 14 is used for February. So January 20, 2011 is like the 13th month of the year 2010. So you will use M is equal to 13 and Y is equal to 10, not 11. For our first example, suppose you're asked to identify on what day was your school founded. Suppose the given date is April 28, 1611. Applying the Zeller's congruence, we have to identify the values of D, M, Y, and C in which D is the date of the month, which in this case the value is 28. The value of M, since this is April, happens to be 4. The value of Y is the last two digits of the year, in which in this case is 11. And the value of C, which is the century or the first two digits of the year, so we have 16. And substituting those values, we have this quantity. Note, however, that the quantities in brackets have to be rounded down. So 13 times 5 divided by 5, we have no problem with that. So we know that this value is 13. But on this part, since 11 divided by 4 is 2.75, we have to round it down to the nearest whole number and that is 2. 16 divided by 4, we have no problem with that since that is exactly equal to 4. So we're going to have 28 plus 13 plus 11 plus 2 plus 4 plus 80. And that is equal to 138. 
And 138 modulo 7 gives us 5, which happens to be Thursday. So we can say that April 28, 1611 is a Thursday. Next, we have what day is January 15, 2031. So let's identify D, M, Y, and C for the value of D, which is the date of the month, that is 15. Now for the value of M, since this is January, we're going to make use of 13. And for the Y or the last two digits of the year, since the given is January, we have to consider January as the 13th and 14th month of the previous year. So in other words, we're not going to make use of 31, but rather we're going to make use of 30 as the value of Y. The value of C will then be 20. Next, we have to remember that the quantities written in brackets have to be rounded down. So starting with 13 times 14 divided by 5, which happens to be 36.4, when rounded down is 36. 30 divided by 4 is 7.5, when rounded down is 7. And 20 divided by 4 is already exactly 5. So getting the sum of 15, 36, 30, 7, 5, and 100, we're going to have 193. And 193 modulo 7, or when 193 is divided by 7, we're going to have 4. And 4 is a Wednesday. So we can say that January 15, 2031 is a Wednesday. For other ways to identify the day of a given specific date, John Conway and Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland, Yes, she is a mathematician as well, have proposed other algorithms, which I will post in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned in this video. Do not forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. See ya!